you can now buy an electric flying motorcycle for $69,000 in China. Now, normally I wouldn't do a video on this kind of thing because it kind of seems, I don't know, maybe comical, but this thing is the real deal. And it's actually pretty damn good. Probably better than a drone, actually. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Guys, I'll be at the Melbourne EV Auto Show next uh, next weekend. And, and I'd love to see you there. I'll put a link in the description to 25% discount on your tickets. The Skyrider X6. It adopts a dual mode configuration, right? Which enables both driving and flying, which is awesome. I mean, this thing reminds me of that flying car in Harry Potter. I don't know why, but it just does for some reason. Anyhow, the X6 was designed and developed by Richter, a tilting three-wheeled amphibious flying motorcycle. The vehicle is now available for pre-order on JD.com for $69,000. US What are the details? I mean, is this thing actually any good? Well, assuming it does what they say it does, then it's way better than I expected it to be. It has the ability, right, to, do, to go 70 kilometers an hour and it has 200 kilometers of range. I'm going to guess that's CLTC, but anyway, that's, you know, probably, 100, probably 150 kilometers of real world range. My only question is what happens if you're still in the air and you run out of range? Does it, you know, does it know what that's going to happen and start flying you down earlier or do you just, I don't know, drop to the ground? In flight mode, it uses a six-axis, six-rotor electric propulsion system capable of reaching 72 kilometers an hour with a maximum flight duration of around 20 minutes. Apparently, the vehicle could serve short-range commuting and emergency transport scenarios. The reverse trike layout uses a mid-mounted rear-wheel drive system for ground stability, and the body is made from carbon fiber composite to keep it light an aviation grade aluminium alloy in order to, yeah, I mean, enable it to get off the ground. If it was too heavy, then, it, you know, it couldn't fly. For flight, the Skyrider X6 supports automated takeoff, landing, route planning, and cruising. Manual operation via a joystick is also available for experienced users. Guys, I've got to say, I don't know if I'd want to be the first person to, to fly this, but um, if I see a few other people give it a go, I'll be willing to try it on my next trip to China. So, yeah, I mean, as long as there's a few other test dummies willing to, willing to have a shot before I do, then this would be cool. Safety features include redundant propulsion and control systems. The rotors are powered by independent motors that can continue operating, says can't use China if one fails. So this is a pretty cool feature, right? With a lot of airplanes, smaller airplanes, one motor fails and you're dead. Yeah, one motor fails here, you keep on flying. Well, in theory. The flight control unit includes backup logic for stability in variable conditions. So if it gets windy, um, yeah, you should be okay. A ballistic parachute system is designed to deploy automatically during critical failures. The vehicle's battery, how big is it? This is interesting. It's a 10.5 kilowatt hour battery. So to give you some context, uh, a battery in say the standard range Tesla Model 3 or the standard range uh, BYD seal, that's a 60 kilowatt hour battery. So it's one sixth the size of that battery. It, it supports DC fast charging, not sure how fast, but they say you can charge the battery in one hour to 100%. And I think you'd want to be charging the battery to 100% before you go for a, a flight. Now, apparently this was first introduced at CES in 2025, but the earlier model I had retractable wheels for ground operation and a four axis eight rotor layout for vertical takeoff. Eight rotors though. I mean, if there's eight of them and one of them fails, then you've still got seven, right? So two fail, you've still got six. You should be okay, I hope, theoretically. Two different models, right? This is the, this version is a 10.5 kilowatt hour battery. It's a semi solid state battery from, I think it's from We Lion. And the energy density of that battery is approximately about 300 watt hours per kilogram. So pretty good. 25 minutes of flight time. Now you can get a version with a much bigger battery. It's a 21 kilowatt hour battery, which gives you 40 minutes of flying time or 50 kilometers of range. That's pretty good. 
I mean, 50 kilometers, not bad. The X1 supports 50 kilowatt DC fast charging, reaching 80% capacity in 30 minutes. So the more expensive version is quite a bit better. Bigger battery, much faster charging. It also has a, well, very interesting safety system, including a triple redundant flight controller, a 0.3 second emergency parachute deployment system. How do you parachute? De and that's interesting, isn't it? I'm guessing it's not an ejector cockpit. I mean, an ejector seat. Otherwise, you'd be, you'd be destroyed, right? Anyhow, you jump out and you've got a parachute system and a real-time battery monitoring. Nice to know the parachute option is there, I guess. That's cool. According to Kook Wheels estimates, aerial commuting can significantly reduce travel time unless you crash into another one. For instance, a trip from Pudong to Pusi in Shanghai, that takes 90 minutes by car, could be shortened to 15 minutes by air. But obviously, you would need some really good technology to make sure you don't crash into other people flying their own flying motorbikes as well. Operating costs are said to be 41 cents uh, per kilometer in flight mode, with annual maintenance expected to range from 20,000 to 30,000 UN, which is around 2,800 to 4,200 US dollars. So annual maintenance is quite pricey. Got to make sure your flying motorbike is operating correctly. Airspace regulations remain a big challenge, says Carnage China, as you can imagine. In China, civilian low altitude airspace under 200 meters is not legal. Additionally, flying the Skyrider requires a light sport aircraft license, which involves a training investment of 7,000 US dollars. Sounds like a decent deal though to me. Its main rival in China is Xpeng's or Xiaopeng's Aero HT flying car. But those are 166,000 US dollars. I mean, for the price of one of those, you can get three flying motorbikes and have some fun with your friends and see if, see which of you can stay alive for the longest. Now, in all seriousness, guys, I think these, these will work. And I'm a huge fan. I just love this stuff. It's technology. It's exciting. The future of the world. Yeah, these things are not going to be very common for probably 10 or 20 years, but they will be eventually. Our grandkids will be flying around in these. Really, that's going to be crazy. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Bye-bye. Guys, I honestly think this is kind of ridiculous. Even though I do like the X-Punk brand, you know, as you guys know I've ordered an X-Punk G6, by the way, if, if you want to order one and you're here in Australia, use my link, make sure you do that because then you'll get a free charger and home installation as well. I'll put a link in the description below. Now guys, the the X-Punk, or X-Peng, depends on how you pronounce it, I've never, I haven't quite worked it out yet. Uh, their new flying car, it looks like a Cybertruck. It's very, very interesting looking, but apparently it's a huge sales success. I actually sat in Australia at the EV show in Melbourne. I believe it's going to be there again at the EV show in Sydney, by the way. I sat in their flying car and the thing was pretty damn impressive. It's incredibly lightweight. It's all made of carbon fiber. It honestly um, is the kind of thing where you thought, I thought to myself, would this be kind of scary? <laughs>